Hey, how's it going everybody? Uh, I'm sitting low out in the garage just tinkering with another uh, one of these Predator motors. And uh, it's been a, been a little while since I did an update video on this uh, little chopper here, but this thing is still running killer. I did a couple of other mods to it. I did the valve springs and the, the carb and the jet kit and I got the billet flywheel and uh, all the uh, air cleaner, the adapter. I still got to get a little breather for that one there but that definitely made a noticeable difference in power for sure it kind of used to lag because you I mean that the sprocket I put on the back was so small I had a hard time getting it up to top speed the torque converter made a, a big difference in that aspect but the uh, I'm gonna say the flywheel and the jet kit and just that that little I guess what would you call a stage mod, stage one mod kit you know definitely made it a a little, a little beef here for sure so I'm basically doing the same thing to this bike uh, this little track 2 here I've been working on just tinkering with and uh, I got another Predator for it because it, you know these motors just run good the only difference is this one is the newer style the one that they call the Hemi the Hemi head I guess the, the way you can tell is the see how this one has this stamped uh, or cast basket or not basket, a uh, valve cover, and this one has like a stamped, almost like a like a pie tin. That this is the uh, second generation Predator. If yours has this valve cover, it's uh, the Hemi. What they're for doing? They're different in the sense that uh, on the uh, regular ones, there's just a, to get the change of valve springs. There's like a retainer stud here that you just simply undo. And you could kick the rockers to the side or even take them off. And then, boom, you got access to your valves. These are held in by these uh, C clips and this little, uh, I guess, axle, little dowel pin that goes in there. So it's a little bit different. And I got my feeler gauge out. And as far as the, the valve lashes go, they're, they're pretty much the same as the, uh, the old Predator. So. Uh, like I said, it's a little different. I'm I'm not really never really done them on this kind of style motor, so I guess I'm gonna learn something new today. Um, what I'm gathering is I got a pop. If I were to guess, probably this one C clip out and slide this whole thing out, and then that should allow me to lift the whole rocker right out. And uh, and that if that's the case, I won't even really have to touch the uh, the valve lash. Um, but that's not always the case. I'm just saying it could be. But I'm going to start digging into this thing and see what I come up with. Um, first thing I'm going to do actually is because i got to pop these little C-clips off and I don't want to drop them in the motor. I think I'm going to take like a, a rag or some paper towel or something and try to wedge it down in there, those ports a little bit, just so if that uh, clip goes flying it doesn't go into the motor and i got to tear the, all, that whole thing apart. And so. I'll be back in a second, so stay tuned. Alright, I'm back, and I either made an oopsie or I just did it the quick way because what I did was when I was just dinking around before I pulled the spring out, I pushed down on this uh, valve here, and this, uh, where'd it go? See, I'm already losing parts. Right here, this push rod. I just heard it go tink, and there it is right there. It's this guy. It sits in this little pocket here. So either all I had to do was relieve the pressure of the thing or the push rod, so I could, uh, you know, roll, you know, roll the rocker back, and that allowed me to access the uh, valve spring and the retainer and the lash cap, which these simply just pop right off. I like using a little magnet and just simply they just stick right to it. Then you gotta really worry about dropping them in or losing them. And then these, as you push down, you just push it to the side and it pops right off. So I already did this one and I forgot to show you guys, but like I said, I just gotta put it back together now and hope that you know I can get this uh, push rod to go back in the way it went. Hopefully I don't gotta tear this whole side cover off and reset all that shit again, but we'll see what happens. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this side back together and uh, see how it goes. And uh, I'll be back for the then. This is the exhaust side here. 
and then uh, next I got to do the intake so you can uh, see the difference in the springs here let me take this one out of the package for you guys you can just see that this one is uh, much thicker it's a little shorter but it's a much thicker metal spring that one you can squish this one has a lot more resistance to it so it's definitely stronger so should keep the valves from floating up in up in the high rpm so that's why we're installing them so i'll be back all right so i got that push rod back in and it was actually a lot easier than i thought it was going to be um what i did was i took my light shine it down there and you could see where there was a little hole that the uh, end of the push rod sat in so i simply set the push rod down until it was in that hole lined up and I took this big screwdriver here and I put it underneath the rocker arm and all I did was simply just push down you know to uh, push down on the rocker spring and then uh, held the push rod with these needle nose pliers and just put you know as I depressed on the uh, rocker I pushed the uh, push rod right back where it needed to go and it went right back where it needed to so uh, it worked out pretty well so uh, let's go for number two the intake valve here's what I did I pushed on it boom you can see this push rod fell right out let me see if I can get it out with one hand Okay. Yeah, this is hard to do with one hand, you guys, so I might have to... Oh, no, I got it. So simply pull that out, set it aside. Now we can uh, flip our rocker back, giving us access to our... This would be our intake spring, because we already did the exhaust spring, and here's your exhaust on this side, so... Our magnet friend always comes in handy. Pull the lash cap right off. Don't have to worry about dropping it in the motor. I don't know if I'll be able to do this one-handed. I tried doing it with just my thumb. See if I got skills in it. Oh, would you look at that? Bam. Simply push and tilt to the whatever side that that collar is on and spring and the cap come right off. Throw that old spring away or set it aside, whatever you want to do with it. And then go ahead and put, set the new 18 pound spring on there now this one I had one hell of a time pushing it on by myself so I'm probably gonna definitely need both my hands and I don't want to risk dropping this retainer down into the motor so you guys get the idea it's that simple these things and like I said I don't know if that's the right way or the wrong way or whatever I still gotta check the uh, valve lash on it and make sure that's all good but uh when i get this one set in there i'll go ahead and do that and uh, we'll carry on from there all right y'all i finally got the uh retainer on that one put the lash cap back on as well and uh just like i did the exhaust side i put the push rod back in where it needed to go in the bottom you know all you got to do is shine a light down in there you'll see a little hole where the where the ball on the tip of the push rod rests in you get that lined up and then I like to uh, I use this big flat head and uh, simply just put a little bit of pressure on it to rock the rocker up just enough to sneak the uh, the push rod back in and it's all back together and uh, which you know when you think about it I haven't you know tested it yet I haven't fired it yet and I still got to adjust the valve lash if I have to adjust the valve lash. That's another cool thing is uh, I might not even have to adjust the valve lash on it because right now that feels no different. And when you think about it, I didn't have to physically adjust, you know, I didn't have to touch that or I didn't have to undo that uh, what would normally be a, the rocker stud. So I might not even have to adjust the valve lash on it, which is kind of cool. Here's my 003. And it, uh, let's see if I can get it in there. I just had it in there. But yeah, it feels 
feels about the same as it did before I took it apart because I just uh, I tested the valve uh, lash before I took it apart just to get a, a indication of what it was like and uh, it's it feels like no different this one's a 002 on the intake I believe and uh, 003 is the smallest one I got so that's uh, definitely gonna feel a little tighter on the 003 for sure and it, oh shit! It's a little tight, but it, in all actuality, it feels no different than it did before I took it apart. So uh, push rods are back where they need to go. I ain't got to worry about them flying out. I put the uh, retainer caps on in a manner to where they don't have gravity fighting against them, so I don't got to worry about it. You know falling down this way you actually have to push up and this way to get it off so it's the one thing to consider when you're putting it back together you don't want to put them on you know upside down because then you never know it could just accidentally one of these you know one in a million chance it'll pop off I've had so much crap luck like that happen to me so whatever I can do to prevent that so all I gotta do is uh, throw the valve cover back on and uh, then it's on to the pilot jet and the main jet kit, which I don't know if you guys want to stick around for that or not. I might actually make that a different video, but yeah, I might make that a different video because this one's probably already long enough. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and button this valve cover up, throw the uh, exhaust header back on and see what happens. Alright, so I finally got it all back together, got the valve cover on. Re hooked up the uh, breather tube and uh, put the plug back in and the spark plug cap and put this header back on. And uh, yep, yeah, it's another custom header I whipped up out of another pair of uh, bike handlebars and it sounds pretty bitching. So let's see if we can get this thing to run with the new valve springs. And uh, let's see if it fires. So put the choke on. Oh yeah, thing fired right up. It actually sounds a lot better. It's more responsive. But I've only done put the valve springs in it at this point. So when I put the, uh, I'm gonna move on now to the. Uh, let's see what I got here. I got this air filter adapter, cone filter, um, and the carb kit which consists of let's see what we got here the main jet this little guy here and the pilot jet which is this one right here so I'm gonna show you guys how to put those in real quick and uh that'll be in the next video but like I said I just put the valve springs in it definitely made it seem a little more uh, a little more snappier right out of the bat so uh that'll keep the the valves from floating when you get it up in the RPMs. And uh, I actually, you know, when I compare the installation of the valve springs to the Hemi style versus the uh, old school uh, first gen and second gen, I'd say the uh, valve springs are a lot easier to do on this one because I didn't even, like I said, all I did was just uh, plop the springs out and plop them in. And I checked the valve lash and it was exactly where it was and all I did was put it back together so I didn't have to dink around with the valve lash or anything like that so you don't have to worry about getting that right and uh, you, you guys hear it run it's it sounds good so I'll go ahead and do this carbon jet kit now and um, next thing it'll be going back in the track the track too so all right thanks for watching you guys and uh, if you got any questions or comments or anything go ahead and uh, let me know See if I can help you out. Thanks for watching again.